I was going to, but you. I call the East Line Board Selectman meeting to order. Today is December 16, 2015. Philip, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Additional agenda and consent calendar items. I don't believe there are any. So delegations, we have one person in the audience tonight. And uh, would you like to speak? Okay. Approval of minutes of December 2nd, 2015. Move to approve the minutes of the meeting of December 2nd, 2015 is submitted. Second. Any comments, corrections? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Abstain. Okay. I'd like to uh, welcome Mr. Cunningham, Mr. Dan Cunningham is sitting to my left, the camera's right, and uh, welcome, Mr. Cunningham, your Thank first you. meeting, and uh, it's a momentous that. occasion. I'm looking forward to it. Thank it, you. There will be no storytelling. We'll have to wait till after. Yes. Okay. Great. Dan's famous for his stories. Uh, consent calendar. Move to approve the consent calendar for the meeting of December 16, 2015, in the amount of $3,238.03. And three cents. Second. Motion, second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Ayes have it. New business, discussion and action, the Smith-Harris boundary line. You have in front of you the half size print. Uh, it might be big enough, but I'll also bring out the colored <laughs> print as well. You know, this is all town land, first and foremost, that, that you know, this Smith Harris House is part of our town. Uh, the town owns the Smith Harris House. But it's under the control of the Smith Harris Commission. And they've asked to have a clearly defined border for which they are responsible for. And um, we, I thought that was in order. There's a small triangle across from the um, soccer fields. We all know it. We've seen it. it's a grassy spot. It's uh, it faces Lily B. Haynes, and that that corner is down below uh, along the driveway, and it's it's depicted right about here. And that that space now isn't clearly defined as Smith Harris space. And then there's this whole block. I might as well get up. I won't be on mic. Right now, their border. space and this space here through the pond and up is, is what we're going to say is their boundary space which they are solely charged and responsible for controlling. So what we what we wanted to do was just um, and Bill Shear has these specific longitude and latitude delineations here and we'd like to have a motion and uh, action to define the Smith Harris boundary line. Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, define the Smith Harris house boundary line as submitted on the uh, map uh, presented to the Board of Selectmen on December 16, 2015. Second? It's been seconded. Further comment? I take it this has been discussed with the Smith Harris Commission. And they know this is happening and they are happy to. Yeah, if you remember, Mr. Lukowski came, came here right. and actually started the conversation. And we had a lengthy one in my office. We got Mr. Shear involved, um, um, our able staff to come down and, and you know make sure we can do it this way without having to go out and hiring an engineering for a firm or a survey for a firm. 
Yes, everyone's happy. What we did do is um, we made sure there was a, an opportunity. The land north of this, and it's t really to the west because the map mm -hmm. is sideways, yeah. but the, the land on top of this between the neighborhood and UBS is still town land. And we wanted to make sure there was access. If at any point in time the town needed that land, they wanted to, we wanted to ensure there was access. So there would be an access opportunity between where the buses are parked to the right, right of the pond and up through. So instead of it being a, a, a perfect square up on the top right that we're looking at, we, we made it a quadrangle. Very good. Is, did I use the right? Geometry was a long time ago, but um, I, I, don't, I think it's a quadrangle. Um, so yeah, so there is an opportunity for the town to still have access to that point. I don't think you know it, it, the topography up in north north of that or to the west of that is is, is extreme, and there is wetlands as you can see between the shaded area mm -hmm. between is all wetlands. It's not something that would be built upon anyway. But I think the Smith Harris uh, Commission is strong. They're vibrant. There's a lot of talented people there, and they have um, a vision of connecting some trails back there and you know uh, creating some farmland. To demonstrate our historic, our historic uh, heritage. So, um, okay. thank we have you. A motion. Other comments? It's more of a polygon shape. Yeah. Thank you, the, from the engineer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I knew there would be a correction from that. Yeah. <laughs> Any other comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Thank you, folks. 2B is the uh, rules. Uh, a couple weeks ago, you were handed a packet with rules. These are the rules on which we... Um, um, would you be so kind as just to bring that back down, that poster board, and then the, the chair up back on the floor? Thanks. Just, yeah, I throw it in there. Darlene collects those things. Great. Um, we do, uh, we do our... our Bylaws suggest we have regulations of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, these are the rules in which we abide by. Of course, rule number one is Robert's Rules of Order. And it, it, it talks about how our, our agenda should be laid out, consent calendar all the way through. My only suggestion is under Delegations 1C, right in the front. Rule two, Routine Matters 1C. Under delegations, that we can put a note here. It doesn't ha necessarily have to be printed on our agenda each week, but be within our, the rules of which we operate that uh, citizens should be limited um, uh, to five minutes of public comment. Um, and this can be, uh, I mean, that could be the, the actual statement, or we could say at the discretion of the commission. I'm just concerned about someone coming in here and literally being able to filibuster for an hour or two. Um, we haven't had anyone close to that, but there's been threats over the years. And while it's our job to listen to the citizenry, we also don't want um, people uh, uh, doing it deliberately only to get in the way of us doing important business. So I thought it would be nice to have a rule that we probably would never have to use unless we were forced to. Comments on that? I mean, it, it might that might even be controversial in itself. Are uh, there any other suggestions? A question in, r under Robert's rules, and I don't know who we, we could refer that to. Uh, Roseanne might have a, she's been here, you know, obviously the longest. Um, but if it got to the point, can the chair of the meeting say, okay, you've had a significant amount of time to present your piece? or your, your opinion and you know this isn't a debated period this isn't for you to make an actual presentation and then would the board be able at that point in time be able to vote to close delegations because someone is trying to monopolize I didn't know if that was an option well but there might be someone else who wants to speak after that well that's, too, no, that's so a very good point um, that's so if you point. close public delegations then you're stifling others that might want okay, okay I just thought point. that you would limit you could even say 10 minutes. I mean, I, I said five minutes, and, you know, you don't have to enforce that unless it got out of hand. We could just refer to the rules that we have on file that we could pull out at a moment's notice, and uh, if, if necessary. I, I, again, it's almost just to have something to fall back on would be nice. Um, 
Thoughts? Do we want a motion to? Are you are you asking for an amendment to, uh, to, to, for that? Uh, to amend our rules, I guess that we could take a motion to amend the rules to include that. Mm -hmm. If 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 it's your desire. Uh, how about we make a motion to amend our rules and regs uh, for Rule Two, One. Subsection C delegations uh, at the discretion of the chair. Public comments may be limited to no more than five minutes. Per individual. Per individual. Yes. Thank you, Helen. Mm -hmm. I like that. Was that a motion? Yes. Do you want a second for the purpose of discussion? Sure. sure second. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So it's on the table. Mm -hmm. Any further comments? We'll move the motion then. We'll call the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Thank you. Um, approve. Uh, uh, um, uh, I'm looking so at do the we, rules. Do we then need to vote to accept these as the regulations of the Board of Selectmen having amended them? Yes. Yes, I'll move that the uh, uh, rules and regulations as amended for the Board of Selectmen, or the, the Rules and Regulations of the Board of Selectmen as amended on December 16, 2016. 15th. 15th, be approved. Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? We're in fiscal year 2016. That's what <coughs> yeah, sure, that's okay. what you were thinking ahead. <laughs> that's what I like about you. Um, uh, to uh, C, appointment part-time officer Holmes. Move to appoint Paul Holmes of 9R Center Street, Waterford, Connecticut, to serve as part-time officer for the town of East Lyme through June 30, 2016. Second. It's been seconded. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Any abstain? 5-1. Appointment of Deputy First Selectman. Um, I can't work this out. Um, is, is there a motion for Deputy First Selectman? I'll uh, move to appoint Kevin Seary to serve as Deputy First Selectman for the Town of East Lyme to serve through December 4th, 2017. Second. Motion and second. Any further? Uh, well, it's a motion. It's a, uh, a nomination. So um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay, the authorization of First Selectman to sign check registers. Resolved that the Board of Selectmen delegates to the First Selectman and upon the absence or disability of the First Selectman to the Deputy First Selectman, the Board's obligation to sign the orders of the Board of Selectmen on the Town Treasury for payment of regularly budget expenses of the Town with the exception of those of a capital nature over $50,000 where bids are required and further that the signed orders covering the period subsequent to the previous regular meeting of the board be presented at each regular meeting of the board for review. And I also move the following resolve that in the absence of the first selectman and his deputy, the first selectman to delegate the obligation to sign the orders of the board of selectmen to Holly Cheeseman for payment of the expenses of the town. Second. Any comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Appointments, boards and commissions. Okay, we'll share this one. I'll start it off. But we want to do. Um, Take a deep breath. We want to do it via by all the commission on aging first. Yeah, <coughs> and then we'll okay. go to different commissions. So what we can start is I'll take. You know, we can just rotate commission. Take turns. Each person okay. take commission. I'll start with the commission sure. of aging. For Commission of Aging, move to appoint Joan Bankson of 67 Walnut Hill Road, East Lyme, Connecticut, Eileen Harris of 27 Stonywood Drive, Niana, Connecticut, and Joseph Palazzo of 43 Sleepy Hollow Road, Niana, Connecticut, to serve on the Commission of Aging through January 6, 2020. Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Building Code of Appeals. Move to appoint J. Robert Fanner of Two Faro Court, East Lyme, to serve on the Building Code of Appeals through January 6, 2020. Second. All, uh, all 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Cable TV advisory moved to appoint Michael Mines of One Goldfish Terrace, Eastheim, Connecticut, to serve as the town of Eastheim's representative to the cable TV advisory through January 6, 2020. Second. And second, comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Conservation of Natural Resources moved to appoint Arthur Carlson of 30 Dean Road, East Lyme, Connecticut, and Penelope Howell Heller of 61 East Patagansett Road, Niantic, Connecticut, to serve on the Conservation of Natural Resources Commission through January 6, 2020. Second. And second. Any further comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, I move to appoint Laura Ashburn of 31 West Main Street, Niana, Connecticut, to serve as an alternate on the conservation of natural resources through January 6th, 2020. Second. Any comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. East Lyme Harbor Management moved to appoint Gregory Murrin, Murrin of 83 Cordock Road, Niana, Connecticut, Eric Cantor of 27 Well Street, Niana, Connecticut, Stephen Dinsmore of 67 Chesterfield Road, East Lyme, Connecticut, Donald Landers of 3 Beach Avenue, Niantic, Connecticut, to serve as members of the East Lyme Harbor Management Commission through January 6, 2020. And there was a change because Mr. Dinsmore does say Niantic, but he does live in East Lyme. Second. Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I say aye. Historic properties. Move to appoint Mark Christensen of 66 Grassy Hill Road, East Lyme, to serve on the Historic Properties Commission through January 6, 2020, and Margaret Prokop of 52 Lovers Lane, Niantic, Connecticut, to serve as an alternate on the Historic Properties Commission through January 6, 2020. Second. And second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Inland Wetlands moved to appoint Norm Bender, Norman Bender of 11 Poppy Lane, East Lyme, Connecticut, Harold Clark of 76 Giants Neck Road, Niana, Connecticut, Phyllis Berger of 32 West Patagansett Road, Niana, Connecticut, and David Pizzalia of 9 Central Avenue, Niana, Connecticut. The serve as member is Inland Wetlands Commission through January 6, 2020. Second. Uh, any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Town meeting moderator moved to appoint Eugene Cushman of 184 Upper Patagansett Road, East Lyme, as town meeting moderator to serve through January 8, 2018, and moved to appoint Pierce Kinnair of 3 Winchester Road, East Lyme, Connecticut, to serve as deputy meeting moderator through January 8, 2018. Second. And second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Uh, municipal agent for the elderly moved to appoint Kathy Wilson of 224 Ledyard Street, New London, Connecticut, to serve as municipal agent for the elderly in the town of East Lyme to January 6, 2020. Second. It's been seconded twice. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye, seven. Parks and Recreation moved to appoint Jacqueline Curry of 3 Virginia Street, Niana, Connecticut, Charles Fennick of 78 Riverview Road, Niana, Connecticut, J. Robert Fanner, of 2 Farrell Court, East Lyme, Connecticut, and Thomas Beebe of 2 Paddock Road, East Lyme, Connecticut, to serve on the Parks and Recreation Commission through January 6, 2020. Second. Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstain? Radiological officer moved to appoint Stephen Jackson of 19 Mayfield Terrace, East Lyme, to serve as the town of East Lyme's radiological officer and Chris Taylor of Nine Monticello Drive, East Lyme, to serve as the radiological defense officer for the town of East Lyme through January 6, 2020. Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? SCRRRA representatives moved to appoint Joseph Bagraw of 19 Adawan Road, Niana, Connecticut, and Kevin Seary of 25 Quailcrest Road, East Lyme, Connecticut, to serve as the SCRRRA representative for the town of East Lyme through January 8, 2018. Second. It's been second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll abstain on that one since I'm in the motion. That's probably right. <coughs> 
Smith-Harris Commission move to appoint Barbara Odgers of 36 Roxbury Road, Nyanta, Connecticut, Kathleen Sasso of 72 Chesterfield Road, East Lyme, Connecticut, Darlene Delora of 50 Prospect Avenue, Nyanta, Connecticut, to serve on the Smith-Harris Commission through January 6, 2020. Second. It's been seconded. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Trey Warden. Move to appoint William Drzerski of 175 Whistletown Road, Niana, Connecticut, to serve as tree warden through January 2nd, 2017. Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any okay. Town Building Committee move to appoint Robert J. Sullivan of 1 Mallard Circle, East Lyme, Connecticut, and Raymond O'Connor of 23 Roxbury Court, Niana, Connecticut, to serve on the Town Building Committee through January 6th of 2020. Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Stay with me, folks. Water and Sewer Commission. Move to appoint Roger Spencer of 31 South Pine Street, Niantic, Carol Russell of 4 Bramble Bush Drive, East Lyme, David Bond of 50 Smith Street, Niantic, to serve on the Water and Sewer Commission through January 6, 2020. Second. Any comments? All favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Waterford East Lime Shellfish Commission moved to appoint Tom Bolin of 37 South Street, Niana, Connecticut, Eric Cantor, 27 Well Street, Niana, Connecticut, to serve through January 6, 2020. Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Seven. Youth Services moved to appoint Patrick Larkin of 14 Oak Hill Drive, Nyanta, Connecticut, Paul Lucier of 35 North Edgewood Road, Nyanta, Connecticut, and Michael Manifold of 11 Saltair Avenue, Nyanta, Connecticut, to serve on the Youth Services Commission through January 6, 2020. Second. Um, comments is we're going to correct Paul Lucier's address. I know that for a fact. He's up on Alexander. Yeah, I know. My bad. My bad. I just heard that called out. I went, no, that's been years. So I'll get that for you. Um, that's a correction. Okay, we have a motion that's been seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Zoning yeah. Board of Appeals. Move yeah. to appoint Charles Ambulos of 1 Blueberry Lane, Niana, Connecticut. John Schweitzer of 50 Shore Road, Niana, Connecticut, to serve on the Zoning Board of Appeals through January 6, 2020. Second. Motion second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Ayes have it. Is that all? I think we've gone through our first round, and I appreciate all your assistance, um, Mrs. Hardy and Mrs. Stevens, and myself, who made a whole lot of contacts and calls. And, and I'd like to say, on behalf of this whole commission, it's not just my feeling that um, our town is uh, very, very lucky and that we have so many people willing to step up and serve on a commission, a board, um, that, that what's, that's what makes us, that's part of what makes us great. And these people do serve with um, dignity, but they serve with passion and with, um, with great talent. And we truly appreciate your service in this town. So, um, and again, I speak for everyone here on this commission. For that, and it's Ex oh, it's going to echo that that people have decades of service. So yeah, so people people serve and serve and serve. And some new people on the list, which Very I think so. is Great. a wonderful thing to see. Indeed, ex officio reports. The start of our new. Um, did you want to do year assignments? Ex officio assignments. Ex officio assignments. We're going to pass on that until the next meeting, if you don't mind. I'd like to sit down with all, all of you folks and uh, just kind of go over that one more time before we release that. So if anything comes up between now and our next meeting, you're to keep going to those meetings. Okay? And if there's any questions, by all means, call myself or Darlene. We'll set you straight. Or at least Darlene will. Now we can go to ex officio reports. Um, I... In, in Mark's absence, I chaired water and sewer last uh, week. Uh, just uh, they pointed out that up on uh, Cardinal Road, they have installed a fire hydrant, so now they'll have access uh, to a fire hydrant on the Cardinal Road side, so they wouldn't have to come across 161. Fire Chief uh, uh, 
Jim Lewandowski did a great job of explaining how important that is to have there too. He also did a great job of explaining how uh, basically they attack a, a fire when they get there, that people, then property. He did a great, great job of explaining to it, and uh, I think people here, there's several people from Cardinal Road that appreciate it. They also talked a little bit discussion about uh, what it would cost to install water up there, and that's going to be looked at a little closer because the uh, survey did indicate the vast majority of people up there are interested in it. Um, and um, they also uh, also attended Parks and Rec last week, and the only major thing is they're getting ready to look at their rates for the upcoming season, and uh, they tabled that, and they're going to vote on it at the next meeting. That's it. Thank you. Mrs. Hardy? Uh, Commission on Aging. Uh, I reported to you at the last meeting that finally they had a site mm -hmm. manager for the uh, particular for the lunchtime food program and apparently I reported too hastily because that person has already left the job. So I think that this is something that we need to sit down with our TCVVA, uh, TCVVA representatives and talk with them about what's going on and uh, whether or not we need to think about doing things a little bit differently. Um, this is a subsidized program. Uh, right now they're serving on average uh, eight to 10 lunches a day. And for many people, this is their, for many of the elderly, this is their only outing. But um, I think that this is something at this point that we really need to have some discussion uh, with our, we have two representatives to uh, TVCCA, and I think we uh, perhaps, Mr. Nicholson, you and I should perhaps. I think the two of us should, should have a meeting and sit down with TVCCA and talk about that. Okay. P perhaps with. Uh, with Ms. Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's it. That's all. Mark, while we're down there. Uh, Inland Wetlands was actually uh, fairly quick. They just went over some. Uh, existing matters that they're following up on. Um, the um, harbor management, there was uh, the uh, the docks uh, plan uh, that DACO uh, was presenting on uh, Cheney Park, the docks and the uh, moorings, um, which is kind of a preliminary plan to put docks and moorings down off of Cheney Parks. That was uh, on the agenda for review to see if it was consistent with the Harbor Management Act. Um, they, uh, there was a lot of discussion about it, and uh, that's going to be uh, continued to the next meeting in January. Um, and that's something that the town has pushed forward, and I think that the, the town has hired DACO to, to do that review. Uh, the river is still open with the rain we had. Uh, scallop season, good news, has been an excellent year. I told you before that it was actually open. Uh, they said they're having an excellent year. They're 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 uh, within 20 minutes. They're filling the, you know the quota for the number of scallops allowed. Like it's that good, um, but there may be a need to recede uh, the scallops. Um, they did their budget, and uh, so did the um, also sort of inland wetlands. They did the budget. They're pretty much zero. Um, you'll see in the budget there'll be a little bit of shifting of money, and that's uh, in the harbor management. And that's because. Uh, well, Waterford before managed uh, the boat, and uh, we paid Waterford for the um, for any uh, maintenance of the boat. Our manager boat it's going to be reversed now. Waterford will be paying us for the maintenance of the boat, the, the, the their half. Um, this is the brand new boat. The, the brand new boat. Yep. Um, there was no change. Uh, Steve De De Desmore was uh, reelected chairman. Uh, Don La uh, Landers uh, was uh, treasurer, and, and Joe Hitchery was uh, reelected uh, secretary. That's all I have. Dan, uh, no.